Matching the lighting is one of the most important things for visual effects. And so today I'm going to show you how I perfect my lighting inside of Blender. Quickly, I just want to say a massive thank you to all of my Patreon members. Without your support, I don't know if I could provide free content here on YouTube. So I really do appreciate it. If you want to check us out, we have a link down below so you can join our amazing community. Anyways, let's go ahead and hop inside of Blender. Now, uh, I always ask kind of my workflow for HRIs, and so I thought I'd make this video since mine might be a little bit different than most uh, people because I am uh, specifically talking about visual effects. So we want to light this scene inside of Blender. Uh, how we're going to do that is with an HRI. And so uh, what we can do, we have an environment texture set up. We have our uh, CGI object. And most importantly, we actually have a uh, you know object on the ground for our scene. And it is set to a shadow catcher right here. And then also quickly, if I show you the shader, we basically have the uh, kind of image that we're using. So the footage that we're using, we have plugged into there at, uh, using a window texture coordinate. And that is basically giving us some nice texture on the ground. And so that's all we have set up uh, very basic right now. What we want to do is go ahead and light the scene. So I want to find an HRI that matches this as closely as possible. A couple things to look out for is the shadow. And so we can see that we have some basic uh, shadowing down here. It's very diffused, uh, no direct sunlight or anything like that. We're in a indoor area. And so that's a very nice thing to have. Uh, have an HRI as well. Uh, and then also we have kind of a blue overcast sky out here. There's no direct sunlight out there as well. In case we were going to put some CGI out there, um, you want to make sure you match as much as possible. So we're going to go to Polyhaven is uh, my kind of favorite website to go for that. Uh, when you go on the page, you should see this. We have HRIs, textures and models. Let's browse some HRIs. And so usually what I'll do is depending on the scene, uh, I'll do either indoor or outdoor or whatever you're looking for. So we'll go to indoor. Uh, we'll go to like uh, urban and then we'll go um, overcast maybe and just see all of these down here. So these might be what you're looking for. might not be. Uh, you can always look at these balls to kind of see uh, the shadow of our scene. What I actually did, uh, and you can do this as well, depending on what scene you're working on. I went ahead and just searched up train since we are in a train station. If you go to all uh, you can see all of them out there, uh, but just look through a couple of these. And so they have a lot of different options for whatever kind of scene that you're in. Uh, now I went ahead and I was looking at these uh, bowl things down here. And I think this one is actually uh, the one I like to use the most. Uh, just because we can see with the balls, we have a very diffuse light. We have a sort of direct light, but I don't think it'll throw anything off. Uh, but more importantly, if I do want to place anything that's going to be a reflective in our scene, this matches our uh, kind of footage much better than anything else. And so this is one I'm going to use. I just downloaded a 4K EXR and let's uh, import that into Blender. Just open that up and find wherever you save that. OK, so here's the HRI. Let's click and open image. Uh, and now we have it in the scene. Let's go ahead and change the rotation just because the uh, outside is over here. And so I want the uh, kind of shadowing and everything to fall off to the right. And so let's just get the direction right. What we can do is go to edit preferences add-ons and you want to type in node up here. Uh, we need the node wrangler add-on. It comes default with Blender, so you don't need to download anything there. Uh, now with that, if we click our environment texture, I'm going to hit control T to add a texture coordinate and mapping node. And the one we're looking for here is the uh, Z rotation down here. And so I'm just going to rotate that. And that is looking better. Let's kind of uh, see the shadow. There we go. So now the shadow is kind of coming from the right way and automatically that made these shots so much better. Now this is where most people leave it, but I want to showcase uh, some of the tests that I do to make sure that the lighting matches as accurately as possible. So let's go ahead and delete this cube. I don't need this cube anymore. We're going to add a uh, mesh. We're going to go up to UV sphere. I'm just going to uh, move this sphere. So it's sitting on our floor plane and just move it over here. Uh, so yeah, now we have this uh, sphere. Let's right click shade smooth just so we can see that nice smooth shading. So a couple things to know is we do have uh, that texture of the floor kind of set up already. And so as you can see, we're actually having some of that bounce slide in. And so that's very good. Now, real quickly, uh, we do want to kind of make sure all of the white levels are kind of reading as they should. Now, right here we have uh, this side is uh, supposed to be white. But right now you can see over here, uh, this is kind of the white that we're trying to match as closely as possible. Another thing that we do need to double check uh, is the reflections of our scene. So what I'm going to do is with our ball, the reason I like using a ball is because it's very curved. And so that will give us a lot of data about not only the shadowing, but also the reflections in our scene and uh, how they relate to our environment. So I'm going to come over here to tab. We're going to go ahead and uh, Alt Z to uh, reveal everything in X-ray. And if I just select half the half of this, so we do need everything, including these little middle bits too. 
uh, now that I have half of that, we can come over to the material properties. I'll go ahead and add a couple of materials. And for this last one, we're going to hit assign to assign this half to be a chrome ball material. And so let's hit new and go uh, to the base color is fine. White. Uh, let's do metallic all the way up and roughness all the way down. So now you can see we have uh, basically half of our ball is that original white color that we like. But this half is a uh, kind of chrome ball effect. And so this is very real world. Uh, we do use this in the real world to kind of not only get lighting and reflections and take images of that to use as reference for visual effects, but also uh, this is actually how we capture HDRIs in the real world too. And so this is a very kind of real world example that we're doing inside of Blender to try to match those as much as possible. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is uh, let's rotate this so that we can see both of them. And uh, this is a perfect scene to kind of demonstrate what I'm talking about because we have this pole here in 3D space. And so we do wanna make sure we have that pole in our reflections if we did have anything like that. So I went ahead and modeled out this pole, uh, had the same texture that we threw on the floor. So again, that's just using the footage as a texture. And so now, uh, since I have that, I can see if I move this ball around, you can see we're actually seeing that kind of outline of uh, this thing, especially if we had like a, uh, you know, CGI going around this like this, you can see that it's giving us a lot of kind of accurate uh, kind of reflections and stuff there. Uh, so that is very good. Uh, the last thing I kind of want to uh, point out and stuff is uh, the white is looking a little bit too cool in my opinion. You can see that uh, we're getting a lot of warmer tones in this uh, and then we want it to still be cool at the bottom just because this is gray. It's going to bounce up some of that light onto the actual object. And so what I want to do is I want to make the overall lighting a little bit warmer. So let's go ahead and come over to the world tab. Now how I'm going to do that, I usually just add a RGB curve node. So RGB curves, we'll place that into uh, this socket. And then if I go to the blue channel, since blue is uh, blue and basically makes stuff cooler, uh, I'll take the gamma over here. And I believe if we go up, I don't know why exactly it's going up instead of down. Uh, but now you can see we're a little, little bit warmer. We might have a little too much green. So we'll play around with uh, some of the green. So just move that up a little bit. Uh, so yeah, there you go. Super, super subtle. Um, but again, these stuff, uh, this stuff is what you know makes visual effects stand out so much. Uh, we are going to be doing some other uh, color grading in the compositing process, but as close as we can get our lighting in Blender, that is the goal. So if I just hit M to kind of mute and unmute that, you can see uh, this kind of white uh, effect is reading much better to my eye. And so this is kind of how I go about lighting HRIs. It's all about taking all of those steps that we've learned uh, to actually double check our work because uh, once we have this lighting baked in and we render this out, there's really not too much drastic changes that we can make. And so it's always important to get the lighting direction and also kind of some of the hues and white points uh, valid into our scene, uh, how it would actually look in the rear world. Okay, so that's about all I wanted to go over today. Again, all these steps are designed for you to really break down your workflow uh, in order to get a realistic result. And so hopefully you've learned a thing or two. Uh, I would greatly appreciate it if you like and subscribed or uh, consider joining our Patreon. The link is down below for that. But anyways, thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video.